Trump threatens NBC's FCC license over latest fake news story. So Trump threatens NBC's FCC license. That's right. After NBC produces yet another fake news story about Trump, he fires back with Twitter threats. Hi, my name is Paul Gordon, and uh, this is your iTalk of the day. So in another story in which there are, well, <laughs> there are no good guys in this, I find myself begrudgingly in the awkward position of defending the MSM, the mainstream media, also known simply as the state media, deep state right now as a rogue is currently in the office of presidency. So this story starts off well, frankly, it starts off badly for the MSM, as stories about this institution often do. The MSM was, was pretty much caught lying or, as Trump is fond of saying, creating fake news about the president. Now, remember, that was something that started by the Clinton campaign, and it's kind of beautiful that it is what it is now. So this time... The news outlet in question was was NBC. The the never been competent network reported that President Donald Trump was calling for an even bigger U.S. nuclear arsenal than what currently exists. So the network said he said this in a private meeting with military and security officials. So so this is this is another one of those leak stories with an unnamed source behind it. Now, however, one of the people in the meeting, Defense Secretary Jim Mad Dog Mattis. Isn't that isn't that great? And that that that's I mean, if you're gonna have a defense secretary and you know, you really, really love war and violence, you know, Mad Dog Mattis. But if you don't like war and violence, then probably not so good. But at any rate, he said, recent reports that the president called for an increase in the U.S. nuclear arsenal are absolutely false. This kind of erroneous reporting is irresponsible. Now, you're following with me up to this point. The MSM is totally in the wrong as usual. And this is just another example of the MSM being caught in a fake news story. Well, you know, while I am absolutely no fan of Donald Trump, I'm no, I'm no fan of anyone who presumes to rule over 320 million people, but more often than not, I find myself defending him from the MSM. Well, not not literally defending him, more like just finding fault with the MSM's coverage of the map. So it is clear to me that the deep state media is, is totally out to get Donnie. And really, out to get him good. This guy, they, they want him to go away. Now, had the story ended there, this would not be our eye talk for the day. Nope, nope, nope. Probably wouldn't have even been mentioned in this day's uh, uh, selection of uh, news items that, that I put up on iState.tv. By the way, that's iState.tv. You need to go there and get your, your regular dose of, uh, of, 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 of news from the iState. But there's more to this story, which is why this is the iTalk. Donald Trump. Not satisfied with simply exposing the MSM as being the agents of fake news that they are, decided to go full authoritarian. So he told reporters, referencing to the fake news story, it's, it's frankly disgusting the way the press is, is able to write whatever they want to write, and people should want to look into it. He told this during a meeting in which... Uh, well, it was it was a meeting with uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. So you know, foreign leaders visiting. Let's let's attack the press. Good one. Now, of course, I realize, of course, they're not really the press. That's not the point here. I totally get that they're not the press. They are absolutely a state organ. In this case, a deep state organ. Like I said, because the man sitting in the Oval Office is rogue. 
So he also hinted that perhaps NBC should have their FCC license pulled for producing these kinds of stories. And, of course, he hinted it in the way that he loves it. He tweeted it. So he, he tweeted this out. Uh, With all the fake news coming out of NBC and the networks, at what point is it appropriate to challenge their license? Bad for country. Now, later, he issued a follow-up tweet. <laughs> follow-up tweet, I guess. Sort of that, too. Bagging up his latest charge. Network news has become so partisan, distorted, and fake that licenses must be challenged and, if appropriate, revoked. Not fair to public. So, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is where that man, I don't know if I'm pointing to it. Yeah, that man, right there. There you go. That, 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 Donnie, right there, right there. This is where that man went full authoritarian. He went so authoritarian, not just with this last battle with the MSM, but with the NFL recently over kneeling during the national anthem, that even Rush Limbaugh, who has been supporting Donald Trump since he was elected, issued a warning on Trump. And I'm going to try and do my best. Rush interpretation there. I I don't have a good rush. I don't have really. When I do imitations, I do them badly. I'm like South Park, you know, the South Park claim there. You know, some you know celebrity voices are impersonated and badly, or I can't remember exactly how it's worded. That's that's what you get on I State. I do impersonations badly, and I'm proud of it. So this is this is gonna be my my Rush Limbaugh interpretation. Trump Trump. Trump is in the right. Don't don't misunderstand. But no president should have dictatorial power over individual behavior. A president should not be able to tell the owners of a business how their employees are going to act and what they're going to swear allegiance to and all that. That's that's up to the owners to do and it's it's up to the owners to come up with a system of punishment if their employees violate company policy like 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 it is any other business. And then Limbaugh added this, that he doesn't, he doesn't, I don't, I don't think that it's useful or helpful for any employee anywhere to be forced to do something because the government says they must. That scares the hell out of me. We don't want the president being able to demand anybody that he's unhappy with behave in a way he requires. That's scary to me. Even if the president is somebody I happen to like. I, I don't know if Limbaugh has spoken about this this latest one, but it's, it, it, it seems a step up even from this. So, so there he is. <laughs> That's a perfect picture. I'm so glad I found that picture for this. Perfect. So, of course, the Democrats went into histrionics, as you can imagine, but that brood of gun-grabbing wannabes have absolutely, well, I say in the article, which I will link to, by the way, I say in the article, little credibility. Let me just say in the video version of this, they have no credibility. They don't have any credibility with me, and I seriously doubt they have any credibility with anyone who actually values liberty, even if you value liberty a little bit. You know, like if you're a limited government person, you like liberty, but not that much. But still, you like liberty. So even if you're in that camp, if you value liberty, get that ooh, ooh, little poco, you can't have any any credibility uh, willing to, uh, well, I say you, you wouldn't have any credibility that you'd, you'd, you'd be willing to extend to this brood of vipers. Uh, any, anyone, really, who, who understands who and what the Democrats really are, they're, they're not really going to pay attention to these histrionics because, because the, the Democrats, the, the liberty, let's just say, liberty isn't a top priority with the D gang. Okay, <laughs> So I think it's worth noting what the National Association of Broadcasters stated in response to the latest round of Trump tweets that set the world on fire. This had uh, Gordon Smith, their president, making the statement. And, and it is worth noting that Gordon Smith is a former Republican senator from Oregon. Now, I don't know what if it, I mean, it's it's certainly worth noting because he's not a Democrat. Uh, a lot of Republicans are coming out swinging against him. I think Ben Sass came out 
swinging against him pretty hard. But Ben Sass is kind of a he's he's kind of a libertarian that running in the Republican Party, but be that as it may. I think it's worth noting that he said this. It is contrary to this fundamental right for any government official to threaten the revocation of an FCC license simply because of a disagreement with the reporting of a journalist. Well, first off, it's not actually a disagreement with the reporting of a journalist. It's calling out a journalist for once again posting fake news, really, really fake news. But I'm not. I'm not saying that that uh, that gives Trump a permission slip somehow to to make the comments that he did. Uh, so, and on that point, as much as I loathe the MSM, I have no desire to suddenly advocate for government licensing or restricting. And anyone who values liberty, even about a man, uh, anyone who values liberty more. Uh, then a man who might be doing a bunch of other things they like should be troubled by this latest tweet tantrum from the Donald. And I, and I do want to add one last amusing point that, that I, it kind of illustrates why, when I said at the beginning, there's no good guys in this story. And the, the, the point I want to make is, is, is from an NBC article on the Trump tweet tantrum targeting them and no if you go to the article that i link to you won't find a link to their story because i don't link to fake news so they made this rather audacious claim nbc made trump a star by airing the apprentice yeah <laughs> right i grew up in the 80s uh donald trump was a star long before the apprentice and and really what you're doing here nbc is you're showing your inner barry you know the inner barry the one that says you didn't build that business well donnie built donnie nbc i'm not saying that donnie built his business that's another story but donnie definitely built donnie he built that okay he built that donnie msnbc had absolutely nothing to do with making donnie famous and if anything I would say that NBC simply benefited from Donnie's fame. But still, I'm going to say this. This is this is my last word, and this is a word that I'm going to send out to Donnie. So, Donnie, if you're paying attention, buddy, I hope you listen to this part because I think it's really, really good advice. It's really, it's really, you know, it's really great. I'm really great at giving advice. I'm super at it. I'm awesome and incredibly great at giving advice, and I have advice for you, Donnie, okay? Knock it off already. It's... It's, it's like you won the football game, and then you decide to not just spike the ball, but you're going to set the opposing team's bench on fire with the players still sitting in the bench. I mean, sure, you may have won the game. They can't take that away from you. You won the game. But, dude, that kind of crap is going to get you ejected from the league. So this has been your I State I Talk with Paul Gordon. I thank you very much for joining us. And now, uh, our closing remarks. As usual, make sure that you like, share, comment. I'd love to hear what you thought about the video. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash I State. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well hit that bell right next to the subscribe button so you know the next time we make a video because you will not see us and we will not see you until the next time we make a video.